the ones who are actually viewing this lesson must be wondering as to why you should go about with focusing and learning things or issues related with analytical thinking and critical thinking. Now, there is this World Economic Forum a few years ago had come out with a kind of an analysis which says, what are the top 10 skills which have been looked world over when it comes from the field of employment? And in 19, I beg your pardon, in 2015, they said that complex problem solving, coordinating with others, people management, critical thinking, negotiation, quality control, service orientation, judgment and decision making, active listening, creativity. This was the order in the year 2015 that was required by the top employers. But you know, what is to be required or what is actually anticipated by the future employers in 2020, they have come out with another list. And first among them is complex problem solving. Second is critical thinking. Third is creativity, people management, coordinating with others, emotional intelligence, judgment and decision making, service orientation, negotiation, and cognitive flexibility. So here it goes about with emphasizing that when an organization like World Economic Forum has said that some of the most required skills for the future is to do with problem solving skills, which is analytical in nature, critical thinking, which is part of analytical creativity. So that's one reason which doesn't go about with undermining the reason why you should be going through with this particular lesson. Now the list is enough proof to the learners to understand the finer nuances of what thinking and its types are. At this stage, let us spend some time to acquaint ourselves with the different types of thinking we humans are known for. Though there are umpteen number of thinking methods and classifications, this session we will focus on a few important ones. At this point, I urge the audience to get acquainted with very important model on the types of thinking known as the Bloom's taxonomy. Now, different types of thinking are there. Now, one of them is to do with abstract thinking. Now, what happens in abstract thinking is abstract thinkers are able to relate seemingly random things with each other. This is because they can see the bigger picture. They make the connections others find difficult to see. They have the ability to look beyond what is obvious and search for hidden meanings. They can read between the lines and enjoy solving cryptic puzzles. They don't like routine and get bored easily. Now let's get to the next type of thinking, which is to do with the analytical thinking. Now the analytical thinkers like to separate a whole into its basic parts in order to examine these parts and their relationships. They are great problem solvers and have structured and methodological way of approaching tasks. This type of thinker will seek answers, use logical rather than emotional thinking in life. However, a tendency to overthink things can ruminate on the same subject for months. Let's get to the third type of thinking, which is to do with creative thinking. Now the creative thinkers think out of the box and will come up with ingenious solutions to solve their dilemmas in life. They like to break away from the traditions and norms of the society when it comes to new ideas and ways of thinking. They can sometimes be ridiculed as society prefers to keep things status quo. Creative thinkers can also court jealousy if they manage to follow their dreams and work in creative field. Let's get to the fourth type of thinking, which is to do with concrete thinking. Now, concrete thinking focuses on physical world rather than abstract one. It is all about thinking of objects or ideas as specific items rather than as theoretical representation of a more general idea. Concrete thinkers like hard facts, figures, and statistics. For example, you will not get any philosophers who think in concrete terms. Children think in concrete terms as its very basic and literal form of understanding. Let's get to the one which we are really going to focus on the later part of this course is to do with critical thinking. Now, critical thinking takes analytical thinking up a level. Critical thinkers exercise careful evaluation or judgment in order to determine the authenticity, accuracy, worth, validity, or value of something, and rather than strictly breaking down the information. 
critical thinking explores other elements that could have an influence on conclusions. Now let's get to the next type of thinking, which is to do with convergent thinking. Now what happens in this kind of thinking is there is an issue and everybody is trying to think in the same lines. In convergent thinking is a process of combining a finite number of perspectives or ideas to find a single solution. Convergent thinkers will target these possibilities or converge them inwards to come up with a solution. One example is a multiple choice question in an exam. You have four possible answers, but one is right. In order to solve the problem, you would use what is called as the convergent thinking. Now let's get to another one, which people normally say is to do with divergent thinking. I wish that you read a lot on what is this out of the box thinking, or some people even call it a lateral thinking, which is developed by Edward D. Bono. Now in divergent thinking, by contrast, divergent thinking is the opposite of convergent thinking. It is a way of exploring an infinite number of solutions to find what is effective. So instead of starting with a set of number of possibilities and converging on an answer, it goes as far as wide and necessary and moves outwards in search of the solution. In contrast, convergent, all the ideas come together. In divergent, all the ideas move away. So here, let me just put it this way that if I ask somebody to think laterally, what is the color of a peacock egg? Now you would go about with guessing it's white, yellow, green, purple, blue. But you know, the basic question is, does peacock lay an egg? It is the pea hen which lays the egg. So what we do is we are asking you to think differently or think out of the box. Now after getting conversant with the types of thinking, let's go to the specifics on analytical thinking and critical thinking, which is the core of this session. Now let's understand what are analytical skills. Now we look at the definition part, some examples in the course of understanding what this analytical skills are all about. Analytical skills are in demand in many industries and commonly are listed requirements and job descriptions. In the sense they're told, these are the expectations an employer will seek from the potential employees. Analytical thinking can help you investigate complex issues, make decisions and develop solutions. And you likely already possess many analytical skills that employers value. So what exactly is this analytical thinking all about? Analytical thinking is observing and researching a problem or topic to develop more complex ideas about it. Your analytical thinking should result in additional knowledge, solutions or ideas related to the problem or topic. The process usually involves several steps. It could include identifying a topic or a problem or an issue, gathering information, developing solutions or further your understanding of the topic, testing solutions or new ideas based on what you have learned, post analysis or reviewing the solutions worked or assessing your new knowledge. A key element to analytical thinking is ability to quickly identify the cause and effect relationship. This means understanding what might happen during the problem solving process. For example, and examining how new ideas relate to the original topic. Most analytical thinking requires trial and error method. Those with strong analytical thinking skills are often capable of quickly analyzing a situation, topic or problem, and often work well in team setting to accomplish goals. What are analytical, I mean, why are analytical skills actually important? Analytical skills are important because it allows you to find solutions to common problems and make decisions about what actions to take next. Understanding problems and analyzing the situation for viable solutions is a key skill in every position at every level. Developing this ability can improve your work, help you achieve company goals, eventually support your personal career goals.